Hi there, it's Aaron Wolf here. So I made this video because I wanted to share some of my photojournalism work and some thoughts on my travels in life. I've seen a lot of things around the world and learned a lot of things too. And this video will contain a few of them. Now I taught myself to photograph at the age of 14. But before that, I literally grew up in front of the camera. I was pushed into acting as a five-year-old and did this through the age of 12. I definitely did not have a normal childhood. I worked a lot, was very successful, and I did print campaigns and voiceover and TV commercials for many Fortune 500 companies, including General Mills and one pack spree in marked boxes of Cheerios, 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 Cheerios. McDonald's, get this inflatable boat, I'll see you for a mile, and Wendy's. Watch me make this elephant disappear. Wendy and the Good Stuff gang laser slates, you can collect all eight. Now I was a pretty cute kid, really well behaved. I took direction very well and was pretty smart. And I just came to life in front of the camera. From the time when I was a little kid, all the way through adulthood. My smile has always been genuine and always happy and loving. I've always said you can't fake a loving smile and well, that's certainly true. And photojournalism was a beautiful, enriching, and logical progression after my childhood experience in front of the camera. While I definitely came to life in front of it, I really loved being behind the camera as well. The rush I would get from taking a great photograph, when I think about it, those were some of the greatest highs of my life. When I traveled as a photojournalist, I would wake up while overseas with no agenda in mind. I would just hit the streets with my camera in my hand and see what got my attention. And then I'd photograph that. I never knew what the day would bring, but I could guarantee you it was going to be an adventure and I would sometimes meet hundreds of new people. I would usually be outside from sunrise to past sunset, walking sometimes for 15 plus miles a day with my heavy camera gear on my back. I was always looking for that next great shot and that next interesting face and new friend. I had a lot of time to think and clear my head when I traveled by myself, whether by tuk-tuk or ferry by foot, train, or motorcycle. I experienced life-changing events and met incredible people in some of the most remote locations on the planet. I genuinely loved people. I loved hearing their stories and finding out what made them tick. I loved writing those stories down right afterward so I could share them with the world. I wanted you to meet these people and share their wisdom with you. Writing enriched my life in a way second only to photography. I started writing at the age of nine with short stories, and I've never stopped. To be able to combine both of those loves, along with travel, was a dream come true for me. This was my dream job. And I was very privileged to make friends very quickly and very easily while overseas. When I traveled with my late fiancé, she couldn't believe that we could get into a town the day before, and by the next evening, half the town would know me by name. We couldn't walk two blocks without ten people happily coming up to me saying hello. She would ask me, when did you meet all of these people? And I would say, last night. She would laugh and say, he only stepped out for ten minutes. And I would nod my head and smile and say, I know. Again, I just always liked people. I almost always had a smile on my face. I never felt that smiles needed to be rationed. Smiles needed to be shared, and as often as possible. And kids always loved me. It's funny, because I never wanted my own. But I always respected and appreciated the struggles they were going through as they tried to get on their feet. I knew how difficult childhood could be. And wherever I went around the world, kids always wanted me to take their picture and happily pose in the streets. They know who they can trust or not. And well, based on my photos, those kids knew I was safe. Life is hard for kids and adults. I've never been in denial about that, but I always felt the need to not play things safe. I know people who have lived in the same home for 20 years. I don't know what that's like. I've seemingly been on the go nonstop for my whole life and have never been able to sit still because quiet and calm has always scared me. It's so unfamiliar to me, and that's just a consequence of my life. But photojournalism and writing and traveling overseas has allowed me to see parts of the world most people have never had the chance to explore. I loved being the odd man out because it let me know I was far from home and truly alive. I didn't take fancy trips or luxury vacations. Never, not even once. Some of the greatest experiences I had overseas involved me just traveling on $15 a day. 
Even a $2 ethnic meal could light up my face. And the things I saw and the people I met and those stories I was able to capture, those were worth millions of dollars to me in my heart. The simple things in life always made me smile. There was this flock of chickens in Malaysia when I was there in 2015. Sometimes there would be over 20 of them. I fed these guys every day for six weeks. Seriously, it was the highlight of my day. I would sit there sometimes for an hour, often feeding them out of my hand. These chickens all grew to trust me and appreciate me, and I grew to love and appreciate each and every one of them too. Every time I think about them, I smile. I tried to always have healthy habits in my life. Working out, gardening, yoga, learning, amongst other things. I've never ever tried drugs or smoking. I've had alcohol three times in my entire life, all at the age of 18. And I tried to always avoid trouble. Because it really took so little to make me happy. Again, having my camera in my hands and my journal in my pocket and being dropped off in some remote city overseas, that's all I ever needed. That's all I ever wanted. Every time made me come alive. I could thrive in the chaos of some of the most densely populated cities in the world because I knew how to work with that exceptionally well. And surprisingly, despite the amount of work I created as a photojournalist, I've never really been able to travel very much. It's just the way things have gone. And I've never hung my photographs on my walls. To me, the excitement and rush was the moment when I took them. I can look at any of these images and know exactly where I was standing, what I was thinking, why I took the photo, and how I felt immediately after clicking that shutter, even if it was a decade ago. And that was kind of it for me. I've never had the chance to truly stop and appreciate what I was able to capture. It's just the reality of my life. My goal with these images has always been to have these fine art photographs on thousands of people's walls around the world. That's always been one of my dreams, along with having my memoirs and novels on people's bookshelves as well. But life, for some people, can be a very difficult beast. And one of the things I've learned in my short, but very long, 35 years, is that we really have so little control over things in life. We can only control what we do and how we do it, and ideally we do it in the best and most loving manner possible. And throughout my travels and throughout my life, I've always been searching for the elusive answers to life, trying to make sense of this world and the people in it and how we can all work together in unity to make this a better, safer, and healthier place. And I'd like to think I've done my part. So as I think about what I've come through, what I've learned, and the things I've seen and experienced overseas, I just want to take this moment to share these thoughts and some of my work with you as well. I hope you enjoy the rest of these photographs because each one of these images has a huge part of my heart in it. Thank you so much for watching.